Athlete coming down in distance, but great to see him back, Donovan Brazier. He's a reigning world champion in the 800 meters. That's back from 2019 in Doha. And he was one of the guys who we said, man, when the Olympics got postponed, he was hurt the most because he was so ready to be an Olympic champion after that world title. I saw him actually practicing starts yesterday. He said, how does it look? I just want to not embarrass myself. I'm an 800 meter runner. I have not spent a lot of time in blocks. He looks good. But he has said recently that he actually ran that Olympic trials final, which he finished last on a broken leg. He's come back from that injury. Here's a little bit of Milrose Games history. For the first time, a double amputee is competing in the event, and it's Hunter Woodall. And if you don't know who Hunter Woodall is, find someone who is on TikTok and they know. Him. Yeah, you're probably not on social media if you don't know who Hunter Woodall and his fiance Tara Davis, who herself made the Olympic long jump final. A great opportunity for that couple to compete. We'll have coverage of Tara in the women's long jump competition later on in this broadcast. But for Brazier, there on the outside of Woodall, this is all about coming back. He's broken the American record twice in his last two performances at Milrose. Not thinking American record here today. It's just kind of getting himself back on track because it was one of the, the stunners of the Olympic trial. We didn't know at that time he was as injured as he was, but everyone was expecting him to be the favorite in Tokyo. You'd have lost a lot of money if you had bet that he would not make the U.S. Olympic team, but here he is stepping down in distance. And he has the range to be able to challenge here for the win as well. Hunter Woodall will be behind him in lane three. Look also on lane six, Christopher Taylor, Olympic finalist. Yeah, so the Jamaican there at the top. Woodall will kind of get a slower start, but he'll pick up speed here as they get down the back straight. Brazier there, second from the right, trying to gain speed as well, but passed by Vernon Norwood here on this first lap. Yeah, Donovan is not used to this because he's not used to running against people with this kind of foot speed. So Taylor has taken it out very well. Norwood follows him. And now Brazier is hoping to just close this gap. And he's doing that. He's keeping contact, and that's what he has to do. We know he's stronger than the two guys ahead of him. Now coming up right alongside Norwood. Surges past him, but Norwood responds. Taylor, Norwood. Now Norwood's going to challenge Taylor as they come off the final turn. And Taylor tries to move them all out into lane number three, and that works because he holds on for the win. That's a great win by Chris Taylor of Jamaica because he had to know, okay, I'm getting tired. Norwood's on my shoulder, and oh yeah, the world champion in the 800 is challenging as well. Brazier gets a personal best in third, 46.55 for his efforts, but Christ Christopher Taylor of Jamaica holds off both Norwood and Brazier. And as you said, Paul, Brazier had to pull very wide just to find some space in front of him around Norwood and Taylor. So here we are at the bell. They went through in just over 23 seconds for the half. And now here comes Brazier to challenge. But look at Norwood, too, making sure that he holds his line. He now attacks Taylor. And Taylor pulls out wide. That is legal. Pulls all the way out almost to lane three and holds them off. Good win in the early season for Christopher Taylor, who, as I told you at the top, made the Olympic final in Tokyo, finishing in six. This is his Milrose debut, and he gets the win. See the final results. Taylor, Norwood, and Brazier, one, two, and three. And we're now joined trackside by Christopher Taylor. Out of Bolton, just mentioned your first visit to the Armory. A little cold outside, but how's the uh, the heat? And more importantly, how was the victory here inside? Well, the heat inside is pretty well, but the victory is absolutely welcoming to me. Knowing it's my first professional win, it means a lot to me. And tell me, Christopher, when you're in an event where it looks like if you don't run 43, you're not on the podium. What are you doing specifically? to get on that podium. We know well, you made the final last year. Well, last year was my comeback season. So I use that most motivation to come into this season. So I'm working on the speed, speed endurance, and everything that I need to be up the top this time. 